And you know Rodney? He gets no respect at all. Oh. <laughs> Again. I'm not shy. Uh, those old days keep coming back, you know. Uh, but, uh, what? <laughs> no. you, you wrote that song. Yeah. That's a good song. Yeah, it Thank is. Thank you. you how, how many songs have you written that you want to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think about 15 or 16. Okay. Before we go any further, we must talk about. Can you do a close up of Noel's left eye, please? <laughs> close up. What happened? That's not makeup either. Well, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> <laughs> it looks, like, looks like somebody sent you a knuckle sandwich, is what it Yeah, like. but I've been in three fights in my life, and, and they were all one punch fights, and I lost them all. <laughs> 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 this was the third. So, somebody really hit you? For, yeah. For what? What, what happened? Um, I think it was for saying the wrong thing to the wrong guy. <laughs> <laughs> That'll usually do it every time. <laughs> I really, the awful thing is, I don't know who did it. <laughs> well, that's the worst kind of a punch to get. <laughs> it's absolutely terrible. Oh, were you it's, in a bar or what? I thought you were going to say, yes, I was in a bar, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did you what think was I was going to say? Inebriated, I thought you were going to say. <laughs> no, that's no, no. the same. Um, yes, sort of, yeah, nipping, nipping away. Can you talk about what you said and, and what the no, circumstances I'm, were? The, the, what I remember is that somebody in the bar, it was an Irish bar, uh, <laughs> and we were listening to all those, they had a lot of those old Irish revolutionary songs on the jukebox, like the Wild Colonial Boy and things like that, and we were enjoying those, me and my friend that were in there, and um, my friend was a girl, by the way, which it makes it, that's why nobody, anyway, let me get on with the story, um, <laughs> otherwise you might think badly of my friend, and somebody said, you see those guys over there, that's, that's the local Irish mafia, whatever they are, you know, and they were all in, in very well tailored long overcoats. And uh, being slightly inebriated, I went over to see what they were like, do a little sociological survey on <laughs> Third <laughs> Avenue. And um, they, they wouldn't speak to me or look at me. And so I, I suppose I said a few things to try and get their attention. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> and then I walked, I walked back to the bar. And as I was walking back to the bar, something hit me in the left eye. And when I woke up, they'd gone. <laughs> I'll tell you, English people are a little weird anyway, you know. I have no, I mean, uh, no offense, but I have it. Well, I'm, uh, I'm not taking offense no, at anything. I have it. I have it. <laughs> no, you don't get no trouble out of him <laughs> no. until he gets it healed. I'll then. tell you what, I have an English maitre d', Charles of England, you know, he's from Liverpool, and uh, I notice English people are strange, they talk to objects, you know. Like they pick up an ashtray, hello, what have we here? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't I meet him? Isn't he the one that. Shake hands like no, this? No, 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 nothing like that. <laughs> that's, come, that, that's not the first. First come, first serve. But I can't figure maitre d's out, really. Here's a guy, maitre d', he looks right at two people and he says, how many are you? <laughs> I've worked with him before. I'm with right. Rodney? Mm. The first job I ever had in this country, I think. Yeah, four the, years ago yeah, we worked together. Where? Fine. You remember? In New York. Uh, the living room. Yeah. And, uh, that's a very intimate room, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Is that a way of saying small? That's why, that's why you wanted to kiss me when, when I got <laughs> no, It's no longer open now. Uh, some, I don't know. We closed it. Some, <laughs> what, did your, what did your young lady friends say when, you, when they brought you to? Did it knock you out, the blow? Yeah. It mm. did. What did she say? Um, <laughs> did she, should she relay all the details to you? Or? No, she wasn't sure what happened either. No, I see. <laughs> have you been leave that alone? Could have been worse. <laughs> she could have gone with the winner. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you been? Have you been? <laughs> terrible. <laughs> have you been to England recently, Noah? Yeah, I was in England um, the whole of last summer, mm -hmm. making a movie. What was the movie? The movie was called Take a Girl Like You, and uh, I've never heard of it since. So I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that was the producer who belted you. Has it has it been released yet? Um, I don't think so. No. I don't know what they're, maybe they're just, <laughs> I don't know what they're doing with it, really. How do you feel about England, having been here in this country so long? I was very excited and moved by being there. I felt, for the first time in my life, I think, um, feelings of belonging to my country. Because I went, as a kid, you know, I went through a very traditional kind of English education, and we had patriotism and, and nationalism rather rammed down our throats. You know, um, because of the traditional type of uh, format of the school, and I rebelled very much against it. And I didn't want to be in England, and I used to go and live in Europe, continental Europe, all the time. Mm -hmm. 
But when I went back this summer, I felt really a, a, a very strong emotion, which I've never felt in my life, and I suppose that's uh, that much maligned thing called patriotism. I think it that's takes nice. being away from your own country just a bit. You know, when I first went, went to Europe, I got a new perspective on my country. I think it takes being away from what you're familiar with to, to get that kind of perspective where you can appreciate your country more. I think especially when people pressure you into saying you must love your country, because it's like saying you must love your, your woman or your man or your mother or your father. The moment somebody tells without you you must. Out of, without loving out of want. Yeah, without loving out of, um, not, even, not even out of want, but out of just natural feeling. You tend to think, the, the moment you feel anything against any of those people or your country, you think, well, that's not right, because they tell me I must or only love them. Love them. You know. Mm -hmm. But as long as you can feel um, sometimes hate for your pe people and things that are close to you, then you can also feel love for them. You can't feel one without the other, I don't think. Somebody said that you're, you're so interested in writing now that you want to do more writing and, and less performing. Is that true, no? Yeah. Well, no, um, I, don't, I hate to say I want to do less performing because that's how I make my living and there might be people sitting out there saying, oh, well, we won't have him then, you know. <laughs> but it's to do with really, I find it very difficult to be on, if you know what, the, if that expression meaning that when you go out and perform, you have to be something other than what you are um, if you're just walking down the street or sitting at home. I've never and gotten the feeling watching you that you're anything but what you are, knowing you as well as I do. Well, there's a certain amount of... of Maybe this is sheer laziness, but it's like it, doing something. You can't write a song until the song is ready to come out. Um, being very idealistic and purely as an, as an artist, you shouldn't really have to sing a song until the song comes out, but you can't do that, so you have to sing it whether you're ready or not. Um, which, therefore, sometimes the work that you do suffers from it, and I find that um, difficult. Mm -hmm. In fact, a lot of the time, in the last few TV shows I've been... A appeared on, I've been off, <laughs> not on. <laughs> Rather than on. <laughs> uh, like this. On, yeah. Well, that has a lot to do with the way you feel at the time, and you might have some feelings about that particular show before you appear on it, too. I'm that way. If it, <laughs> you know, I was that way, and in, in, in fact, I was quite uncomfortable uh, in England. I did some television there, and, and it, was, uh, it, all, it was all stemmed from the fact that they didn't know who I was or what I did. Really? Mm. But that gives a certain, a certain amount of freedom, too, because they don't have any preconceived well. idea of right. what you do and how you do it. So it's, it's kind of like being a kid and starting all over again, because you could, do any, you could go over there and tell them, you know, you're a tap dancer or anything. Or I don't mean just yeah. go over to England, but uh, other performers coming where, you're not, where they're not familiar with you. It, it's it a reaction, a really, that's, I think with me anyway, it's a reaction to having been successful and um, realize that that doesn't do anything for you except it brings you money, which is very nice, but it doesn't actually do anything for you. Doesn't it do anything for your ego to be successful? Yes, but your ego, you, I think what I found anyway is that, was that my ego turned out not to be the problem after all because I had my ego butted up a lot and that just made me sick eventually. I mean, Nothing it was great worse than for a, a greasy ego. Oh, a greasy ego. Oh, sure. It's terrible. <laughs> But I, you know, I find that when you're talking about being natural, that if you don't feel on, you can't be on. I think there's a whole new breed of performers uh, that don't come out, hiya folks, you know, and all of that sell, 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 and just come out and be yourself. And that's part of the, of the charm and the interest, you yes. know, of, of our kind of performer. And to sing, I mean, I, you know, I don't know if, if I waited for the inspiration to sing, I'd be singing all the time because I like to sing and I enjoy it. And so I don't really feel that it takes a lot to get me up. I think if I... If I didn't enjoy it, I would have to stand backstage and say, okay, let's everybody yeah. get together. But as long as I don't feel the necessity to do that, and I feel that it comes out naturally, I, I think I'm okay for a while. Will you sing another song for us? Mm, How do you feel? I was going to say something. That oh, that's right. <laughs> so was Rodney. So I said, what were you going to say? It, it, well, I didn't talk about performing, but I rather, it's what yeah, I Yeah, because the guy over there is going like this, and I won't oh, have time really? to sing that's my song. That's all, sure, sure. Well, I want you to sing your song, <laughs> please. Is this okay. one that you wrote as well? This one you wrote too? Good. No one